I do want to give you a very warm welcome this morning on this very cold uh, Sunday morning. Delighted to see you for those who are joining with us either in the back room or the creche or online or for those who are here in the service uh, that sang to you this morning. We do give you a very, very warm welcome. Trust that the Lord will bless as we worship the Lord together. I'm going to sing our opening hymn uh, after the introduction. We stand to sing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved our wretch like me. I stand to sing. We thank you, Lord, that you are far beyond and above us, 
but yet you are near to us. And we thank you for that today. We thank you for the privilege, Lord, to be able to meet in freedom and, Lord, to proclaim the praises of God. We thank you, Lord, for your word that we have to open and to read and to, Lord, think about it, Lord, and to apply it to our lives and to feed upon it in these days, dear Father, we do pray. We pray that you will give us a greater hunger for your word. Lord, in these times when our hearts are tempted to be filled with fear, we thank you, Lord, that we can come to you and to your word. And Lord, that you can make these times not a master but a servant. Lord, that it might be a means of drawing us closer to you. And so, dear Lord, we just want to commend this service to you this morning. We pray a bless the pastor as he brings your word and grant him, Lord, grace and help in a wonderful way. And bless your people as we've gathered together. And we pray, Lord, that you might bless our hearts in your word today. And Lord, we do pray for the world around us. We think of many whose hearts today are filled with fear and filled with Lord, great trepidation, Lord, we just pray that you will, Lord, use this whole time to turn hearts to you. Lord, for people whose thoughts are just horizontal, and even politicians' thoughts that are just horizontal, we pray that their hearts in some measure today, Lord, might be raised toward you. We pray, Lord, that their focus might be set upon you. We pray that they might come to the very end of themselves and find that you can be all in all to them. And so, Father, we just come now to ask you, Lord, and in these times and in these desperate times, we pray that, O oh Lord, people might feel their sense of desperation and helplessness without you. And we pray that there might be a turning to the Lord. Dear Father, we just look to you for your grace and for your help. And Lord, aid us as we have come, Lord, to worship you, to bow before you, to exalt you as Lord and God of all, and to obey your word from our hearts. For we ask these saints for Christ's sake. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jim, for leading in prayer. Do give you all a very, very warm welcome. Uh, in the Saviour's precious name, for those who are visiting, uh, you're very welcome this morning. We trust that the Lord will bless. Just want to remind you of a few announcements uh, this morning. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the evening service tonight at 6.30, and if you're free and able to join with us uh, uh, for the service uh, tonight at 6.30, we'd be delighted if you can join with us, please. Uh, then. Uh, Starting on Monday, the fellowship of our churches are having a special week of prayer uh, that runs right from Monday through to Friday in all of our churches. Uh, there will be a, a council, general council prayer meeting on the Monday. Uh, and uh, here in the church, uh, we're having two times uh, of prayer uh, on Wednesday at 8 o'clock here in the sanctuary and then on Friday in the back hall with all of the uh, safety regulations. We don't want to uh, put anybody at risk. So uh, we're only having the two times uh, uh, here in the church. But we do encourage you, uh, if you can, in your own home, uh, to set some time aside to really pray and seek the Lord for, for our nation at this time. Uh, we thank God for the way his hand has been upon our fellowship and upon our people and those who uh, have been through very difficult times and how the Lord has graciously helped. We do acknowledge the blessing of God whenever doors uh, and opportunities were closed to proclaim God's word in other ways. God has opened other doors and the online ministry is something totally new to us. Uh, also the drive-in services that have been a blessing. We give God thanks and we do long for an outpouring of the Spirit of God in our land uh, and upon our own churches that God will really bless. So we do encourage you to uh, set this time aside this week if you can join with us either on Wednesday or Friday uh, as we pray together that God will pour out his spirit upon our land in these uh, times and that God will uh, in mercy remember us and that with this pandemic uh, might uh, be lifted and the uh, restrictions we long for the time again when we can come without any uh, 
uh, restrictions to be able to meet together and to be in the house of God. So do please remember uh, that in prayer. We would value uh, your prayers. Then on Sunday, uh, there will be no Sunday school on Sunday morning for the boys and girls. Uh, uh, the schools are off and we thought that perhaps for one week we would put the Sunday school back uh, for one week. So there will be no Sunday school next Sunday. Teen search uh, will be online. Uh, so if you want details, see uh, Esther. Uh, that's for the young people. The teen search will be online on Sunday uh, next, God willing. Then the service is here. Uh, there will be the morning service at 11.30, uh, followed by the communion service uh, after the morning service, and then the evening service again at 6.30. Uh, uh, just a couple of other announcements. Uh, uh, we're glad to have our brother George Con also from the Faith Mission today. George is very appreciative of uh, the... the uh, support of the church folk here uh, and asked if I would mention that the Faith Mission uh, Conference in Moira that was to be on Wednesday uh, has been cancelled. Uh, thanks those who have supported in other years uh, but the circumstances mean that the, uh, the conference is cancelled uh, for uh, this year. There will be maybe further information about that maybe later on in the year but uh, just George asked if I would uh, thank you for your support in the past and just let, remind you that uh, that meeting is cancelled. Also, uh, June Ferris uh, asked if I would uh, thank the congregation for their prayers for her and for her family in this time of bereavement and for the support that God has been to her. Uh, so continue to remember her. Also for Tom uh, Young, who is still in hospital, Paul Tom is improving uh, after uh, suffering a heart attack uh, and he was hoping perhaps to get out tomorrow. Uh, so continue to remember Tom, uh, he does appreciate the prayers of God's people. So those are just a few announcements. And also to mention that if uh, you want to use the envelopes for your church giving, uh, the, they're there on the table, take a box as you leave if you haven't already uh, received one. I think that's all that we want to mention uh, this morning. I'd like to turn to the Word of God and read from the Scriptures uh, this morning. Turning to Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. And reading from verse 1. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord. And spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown in the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He is my God. I will prepare him an habitation. My Father's God. I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host has he cast in the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sink to the bottom as a stone. The right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. And in the greatness of thine excellency, now thou hast overthrown them that are rose up against thee, and sendest forth thy wrath, and consumed them as stubble. Uh, with the blast of thy nostrils the waters were gathered together, the flood stood upright in the heap, the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil, my lust shall be satisfied upon them. 
I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. Thou didst blow with thy wind. And the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praise, doing wonders? Thou stretchest out thy uh, right hand, and the earth uh, swallowed them. And thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength uh, unto thy holy habitation. And the people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold upon the inhabitants of Philistia. And the dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab trembling took hold upon them. All the inhabitants of Cana shall melt away. Fear and dread shall fall upon them. By the greatness of thine arm they shall be as still as a stone. Till the people pass over, O Lord, till the people pass over, and thou, uh, the, which thou hast purchased, uh, thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, uh, the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hand hath established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. For the horse of Pharaoh went into the, in his chariot uh, and with his horsemen into the sea. And the Lord brought again the waters of the sea upon them. And but the children of Israel went on uh, dry land in the midst of the sea. And Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took timbrel in her hand. And the, all the women went out after her with timbrel and dance. And Miriam said, I answered them, Sing ye to the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown in the sea. Amen. And we know the Lord will bless uh, the reading of his own precious word. Can we bow please for a few moments in prayer? Our loving Father, we do thank you for again this opportunity of being gathering together in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you, loving Father, for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. As we look back over the year that has passed, we uh, lift our Ebenezer and say, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. We acknowledge, dear Father, your goodness and your mercy and your grace. And Lord, as we come again in this new year, and Father, we recognize that we don't know what a day may bring forth. But Lord, we thank you, dear Father, for the one that we can trust. And Lord, we ask, dear Father, that you will uh, be with us this morning in a very real way. We, we acknowledge that we need you. Uh, Father, the, uh, Lord, the arm of flesh would fail us. Oh God, we pray that by the Spirit of God that you will come. And that you will glorify your holy name. We do want to remember those who cannot be with us this morning, those who were laid aside in uh, Father Hospital. Lord, we do pray for Tom this morning. We ask in Jesus' name that your hand uh, will be upon him. We thank you for the way that you've undertaken, and we commit him to you. We pray that you will strengthen him and that you will bless him. Uh, Father, we pray for June again. We ask, Lord, that you'll continue to help her. And others, dear Father, who have been through times of great difficulty, we want to commit to your loving care. For those, dear Father, who are not able to come to the house of God, we do pray that you will bless them wherever they are this morning. Oh, Father, we pray that you'll draw their hearts out after thee. As Shulamite said, draw me and we will run after thee. And we ask, Lord, that our hearts will pant after thee as the, as the heart panteth after the water bricks. Oh, that you will stir our hearts in these days. Remember our land. 
Remember our nation, dear Father. We long for times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. We know we don't deserve the least of your mercy. But Lord, we ask in Jesus' name that you'll come and that you'll revive and restore again. Oh, Father, come and reveal yourself. We pray for days of of the outpouring of your spirit and your blessing. We pray for those who are serving you. Uh, Father, whatever capacity we ask, Lord, that you'll bless. We pray for Stephen and Linda this morning. We pray that, dear Father, as they face the challenges of this new day and new year, we pray that they would really know the help of the Spirit of God and the blessing of God. We pray for Derek and Carol and, and the ministry that you've called them to. And we pray that you'll encourage them and bless them. We thank you for the work of the faith mission. And we pray that you'll continue to uh, make a way, dear Father, and open doors, dear Father, and give opportunity and bless, we pray. And loving Father for others, Lord, who are serving you in the field. We pray for Gemma as she waits, dear Father, for uh, the opportunity to go and serve. We pray that you'll go before for, for Danny and Philippa, there are many that we can bring before you. And we ask, Lord, that you'll bless. So, Lord, as we turn to your word this morning, we ask, dear Father, that you will just open our ears and open our hearts. And, Father, we pray that you'll speak to us. And, Father, personally, individually, powerfully, uh, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the text that I want to leave with you this morning for this first Sunday of this new year is the verse uh, on our motto, uh, Exodus chapter 15 and verse 2. Uh, Exodus chapter five, 15 and verse 2. The Lord is my strength and song. And he is become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and song. He uh, is become my salvation. This is a song of praise in response uh, to what uh, the Lord has done for his people in uh, the uh, previous uh, verses. Uh, we, we find that there, there is an order uh, in the text. Uh, it says, the Lord is, uh, the Lord is. There is a, an understanding of who the Lord is. If we're to really worship God, then we need to really understand who he is. His wonder, his might, his majesty and his power. And the text of scripture begins with a focus upon who the Lord is. The Lord is, uh, he says, the Lord is my strength uh, and my song. Uh, we recognize that we have no might or strength of our own uh, against the enemy. And the children of Israel were facing a, a situation where they knew that they did not have any might or strength. But they recognize that the Lord is uh, the, their strength and song. Uh, and uh, the way that God revealed himself to them uh, not only revealing himself uh, as the one who is their strength, but out of that flowed this song of praise as they uh, witnessed and saw the greatness of God. The, the natural re reaction was that not only did they glory in who the Lord is, and the Lord is my strength, but he's also my song. Uh, and we find that not only is there a revelation of who God is, and the praising of his holy name. But there's also a response that comes because of who he is. Because he is my strength. Because he is my song. He will become the one who I trust. He will become my salvation. He will be the one who I depend upon. And the one that I uh, look to in every situation. Uh, we recognize uh, that this is perhaps not the order in which we often think ourselves. Uh, we often begin with ourselves and our own needs and, and, and uh, we, we begin to cry out to God and, and uh, whenever God responds to us, then we praise him and thank him. But, but this is totally different. God is revealing himself to them uh, and, and as a result, uh, a result of God revealing himself to them, 
Then they sing his praise and declare their faith and their worship to him. A man's worship often comes from a cold heart that is trying to call out to God so that God will respond. But God is a God who reveals himself. And we're told in the scripture that they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so uh, this song that we read of uh, here in Exodus uh, is a response to uh, who God is and what God has done for them. Uh, we uh, realize that if you were to go back a chapter, uh, there was a different song uh, sung in chapter 14. Uh, the response of the children of Israel before they crossed over the Red Sea was totally different. Uh, we read in verse 10, uh, it says, And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out to, unto the Lord and said unto Moses, Because there was no graves in Egypt that thou taken us away to die in this wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us and carried us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in this wilderness. You see, here are uh, the children of Israel, before God revealed himself to them, their song was a song of gloom and doom. Uh, a song of, of uh, rebellion, in a sense, against all that God was longing to do for them. And uh, we find that uh, they said it would be better for us uh, to live in the bond of, of Egypt uh, than to be uh, uh, found in this situation. And yet we find... Uh, that uh, just uh, the, the very next chapter, the song is totally changed. Uh, the song is totally changed. And while we read in verse uh, 10 and 11 and 12 uh, of chapter 14, uh, where they're saying, Wherefore hast thou dealt with us with us? Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians, uh, for it had been better for us. Now the song is totally changed. Because God has revealed himself. And then sang Moses the, song, uh, the children of Israel the song uh, unto the Lord saying, I will sing of the Lord for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown in the, the, the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. You see, dear friends, as we look at this passage of Scripture, you see that uh, for, for uh, a long number of years, 400 years, they had lived under the mighty Pharaoh and under the bondage of Pharaoh. Uh, we read uh, that uh, Pharaoh's chariots and his hosts uh, as he cast into the sea his captain and his chosen as he drowned in the sea for 400 years they had seen the, the might of, of Egypt and the power of Egypt uh, and, and they recognized they, hadn't, they were slaves they were in bondage they were going around searching for, for stubble to try to make brick they were living in, in, in weakness uh, and they had no might against this mighty mighty uh, nation of Egypt uh, until God came and we have the beautiful uh, story of God redeeming his people and God bringing judgments whenever God said uh, to Pharaoh let my people go uh, we, we see something of the, uh, the rebellion of Pharaoh uh, until God humbled him and God brought Pharaoh down and through the redeeming blood and the children of Israel were spared and the, uh, the, the God stepped in and, and, and gave to his people liberty and freedom. Uh, and we find that uh, they still lived in the bondage and the fear of the Egyptians. Whenever they saw uh, the, the, the Egyptians pursuing after them, uh, they still had not come to that place uh, where we find them in chapter 15. Uh, they were shut in, the mountains were at neither side of them. Uh, the Red Sea was before them and the chariots of uh, Egypt were pursuing after them. Uh, and uh, they were in uh, fear, uh, great fear. Uh, the scripture reminds us of that, uh, that they were sore afraid. 
We recognize that Pharaoh is a type of the devil and the powers of darkness in this world. And there are many who are in bondage to the powers of sin. There are many who live under the dominion of the devil. And the devil is going round like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Uh, there are many who are in fear because of the enemy of their soul. And, and even those who perhaps have known something of the redeeming work of Christ. Recognizing that Jesus Christ has paid a price to set them free. They still live in bondage. Uh, they, they recognize they are weak. Uh, and there is an enemy that is, is seeking to destroy them. We read in this uh, passage of scripture where it says in verse 9. Uh, the, the enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. E even though uh, Pharaoh had been humbled uh, and, and had agreed to let the people go, his intention was still to destroy the people of God. And we recognize that there is an enemy. And he would seek to destroy the lives of men and women. He would seek to destroy uh, those who uh, he pursues. Uh, to draw back and to ensnare uh, and to captivate. Uh, you read the story of Pilgrim's Progress and you recognize that when Pilgrim decided to, uh, to leave the city of destruction, it wasn't an easy uh, road. There were battles to face. There was, there, there was uh, challenges to face. And we recognize there is an enemy. And the enemy is against us and we recognize uh, that we have no might nor power of our own. And yet we find here uh, in this passage of scripture God revealing himself. God coming uh, and revealing his power. And we read in verse uh, 3 uh, of uh, chapter uh, 15. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is a man of war. Uh, there, there's uh, a song that comes after victory when you see something of a God who reveals himself we, we have many pictures uh, of God in the scripture but here is one that uh, we, we focus upon for a few moments this morning the Lord is a man of war the Lord is a man of war uh, he reveals that and the Lord is his name and we find so often in Scripture that there's battles. Uh, but uh, whenever the people of God understand who God is, and you read, and we could turn to, to many passages of Scripture this morning and just allow our minds to focus upon the wonder of the one who fights for us in the midst of the battle. The one who is the captain of our salvation. The one who goes before us. Uh, the one who makes a way where there is no way. We read in Psalm 3, and I've been reading in my own devotions a few days ago, and it's really uh, burned in my heart, uh, those verses of uh, Psalm 3. And it says, The Lord, uh, how are they that increased, that troubled me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be that say unto my soul, There is no help for him in God. Uh, Selah. Uh, we recognize there are times that whenever God's people face difficulty and it seems the enemy is against them and, and uh, there's, there's none to help. And yet the psalmist could say, but thou, O God, or oh, thou art, O Lord. Uh, we, we find here again when he understands that the Lord is a man of war. He, he comes to fight on our uh, uh, behalf. He comes to stand between us and the enemy of our souls. And just as the, uh, the, the, the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire led the children of Israel. And you have that beautiful picture that whenever the Egyptians were pursuing, that the pillar of cloud went from before them to behind them. Uh, and it was light to the children of Israel, but it was darkness to the children uh, or the, the Egyptians. And the Egyptians came to realize that the God of Israel is fighting for his people. We have a God who is, who is on our side, one who comes to fight on our behalf. And so we find when the psalmist is uh, speaking about those that are increased that trouble me, he says, but thou, O Lord, art a shield to me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. 
I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and I heard me out of his holy hill. I lay me down to sleep, I wake, for the Lord sustaineth me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people uh, that have set themselves against me, O Lord. Arise, O Lord, and save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten mine enemies and the cheekbone and have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Uh, thy blessing upon thy people. What a wonderful God we have. He's a man of war. He's a man of war. And he comes to fight against the enemy of our soul. Right from uh, Genesis chapter 3. It tells us of the one who would come. And he would, he would crush the head of the serpent. He comes to fight the battle. So that we might know uh, the victory. We, we take our walk through the scriptures. Right from uh, Genesis and, and into the Psalms. And you see the times that God came as a man of war. To fight for his people and had to stand in the midst and reveal himself. And you go right down through to uh, Revelation chapter 15 and again that, that amazing passage that uh, we find in, in uh, Revelation that John had uh, there in chapter 15. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvellous, seven angels having seven last plagues and in them are filled with the wrath of God. And I saw as it uh, were a, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his uh, mark and over his, the name, uh, the number of his name and stood in the sea of glass and having the hearts of God. And they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God and the, and the song of the Lamb. Great and marvellous. Uh, are thy works, uh, O Lord, uh, the God Almighty, just uh, and true are thy ways, thou King of saints, who shall not fear thee? I don't know if you ever heard uh, Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir singing uh, that, that uh, piece of scripture, my it stirs the heart. Whenever you think of the God who comes, uh, John was looking out and, and just as the children of Israel stood on the, the, the bank of uh, the, the Red Sea and they saw the enemy destroy, John projected away into the future. He saw a day when, when again that song, the same song would be sung. Uh, great and mighty uh, are, uh, uh, O Lord, art thou just and uh, true are thy ways. Who is like unto thee, glorious, uh, O glorify thy name, for thou art holy. All the nations that come to worship before thee, uh, for thy judgment have been manifest. What a great God we have. He, he is a man of war. The Lord is. The Lord is. He is one who is strong and mighty, mighty in battle. Uh, the Lord is strong and mighty. We, we recognize that as Christians, uh, we, we face, we live in, in uh, this world is, is not our home. We're in an alien world, a world that is against truth and righteousness. Uh, when, when the enemy is, is very active and very uh, prevalent and yet uh, we recognize that uh, there is one who, who, who stands with us. We read in Ephesians, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil and having done all to stand. We recognize uh, that we have one who is with us. Uh, we read in Jehoshaphat's prayer in Second uh, Chronicles in chapter 2. Oh, our God, uh, wilt thou not judge them? For uh, we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are unto thee. See, dear friend, when, they, when the children of Israel were on the wrong side of the Red Sea, uh, and they saw nothing but difficulties, and they saw nothing but obstacles, they saw the impossibilities, they saw the enemy. Their hearts were, were, were negative and filled with fear, and uh, there was no hope, and there was 
uh, nothing to live for. They, they, they would prefer to go back to the bondage and then to find themselves in this dark situation. And yet whenever God came and revealed himself, they stood on the other side and they saw, Marvelous are thy works, O Lord of hosts. The horse and his rider hast thou uh, cast in the sea. And we find that Moses, uh, uh, again, uh, Moses encouraged them. Uh, even whenever the enemy was approaching, we have those uh, great verse, uh, words of Moses when he said in chapter 14 and verse 13, Moses said unto the people, uh, Fear not, fear you not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he shall show you this day for the Egyptians whom ye have seen. Uh, today uh, ye shall see them no more forever, for the Lord shall fight for you. And ye shall hold your peace. Dear friend, that's what I want to leave with you this morning as we come to worship God, as we face the unknown future, uh, to recognize that the Lord is the one who will fight for you. Whatever battles you have, whatever situation you face, whatever problems uh, you struggle with, there is one who said, Stand still and see the salvation uh, of the Lord, uh, the one who is mighty. Uh, we, we, I can still remember Ronnie McCracken whenever I was in Bible college preaching in Psalm 24 uh, and, and those beautiful uh, verses lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle he is the one who has won the victory we can follow in the train of his triumph. We can, we can pursue uh, and we can follow him. And he leads us from victory to victory. We, we have those amazing words in Isaiah that stir uh, my heart every time I read them. In chapter 63, who is this that cometh from Eden with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, travailing in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and, uh, and thy garments like him that treadeth the winepress. I have trod the, trodden the winepress alone, and with the people there was none with me. And so it goes on. Uh, the day of the vengeance is in the heart. The year of the redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help. And I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my own arm. We have that picture of Christ and going to the cross and facing the enemy and his garments stained with blood and triumphing over and crying it is finished and crushing the head of the enemy revealing his power and his glory. And so we have the picture that God gives to us a man of war. The Lord is a man of war. He's one who is mighty. He's the conqueror, uh, the mighty conqueror since he rent the veil in two. Uh, Fern and Hiram penned those beautiful words. I saw a new vision of Jesus, a view I had not seen before, beholding in glory so wondrous with beauty I had to adore. I stood in the shore of my weakness and gazed on the brink of my fear. It was then that I saw him in newness regarding him fair and so dear. Dear friends, God wants us this morning, as it were, to stand on the shore of our own weakness. We recognize that we have no might. I have no might. I couldn't take one step. I couldn't do anything without his help. But this mighty man of war, the Lord is my strength. He's the one who girded us with strength. He's the one who says, fear not, I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. He is the one who is greater than David. David went out and he, he fought with a lion and a bear and he delivered the lamb out of the mouth of the lion and the bear. And we recognize that there's battles. Some of our children are in the mouth of the lion or the bear. Some of our family. And there's a battle and we have no might nor power or strength. Neither know we what to do. But there is one who is mighty. 
And he will fight our battles and he will deliver. There's one who is mighty. And we read of David going and facing the Goliath. But the offender is one that went to Mount Calvary and he smote the enemy and he won the victory and he is the one who is the mighty conqueror. He is the Lord, uh, is my strength. He is the one who comes to me in my weakness and he carries us. He is the one who gives us strength and he infuses his power as, as uh, the, the scripture teaches us in Ephesians. That, that, uh, that strengthen with all might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ might dwell in your heart by faith. Isn't it a wonderful thing? Not only does he come as the mighty man of strength, but he can give strength to those who have no might. He's the one who comes and he is my strength. He is the one who is greater than Samson and can open the prison doors and can cast the gates of brass and iron asunder and he can make a way. He is the one who can open the Red Sea. He's the one who can stand in the midst of the flaming furnace. He is the one who can shut the lion's mouth when he rages against us. The Lord, the Lord is a man of war. He, uh, we, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. The Lord is my strength. See, dear friend, that's what we desperately need. We need strength. Because we have no might. We need someone to come and help us. Because we have no help uh, in ourselves. Uh, we, we don't even know our own weakness. Others see us and perhaps think that we're strong. And, uh, but, but we're not strong. We're weak. We desperately need him. We need him to be with us and come to our aid and stand with us. We're as weak as water and yet he's the one who says the Lord is my strength. He is my strength. And uh, whenever uh, he comes and reveals himself to us, it brings from our heart a song, a song of praise. He is my strength and my song. Didn't the psalmist say in Psalm 40, he brought me up out of a horrible pit and out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. He had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many of us have a song of thankfulness to God that he ever reached down and lifted us and ever came to us when we were broken. Uh, time, times that we, we, we couldn't even uh, cling on and he came to us he came and he gave us strength to go forward and to trust him and to lean upon him and we discover that he is able to save to the uttermost he, he is able to keep us from falling he is able uh, to give to us the victory he is able to give us grace that is abundance and free and so it becomes our song and we recognise as we look back on the past, uh, uh, the, even before we ever knew that we were lost, even before we ever uh, were born, before the foundation of this world, Christ Jesus has made provision. Uh, he came into this world to save sinners. Uh, and he, is, he, he, he planned uh, that dark road of Calvary. Uh, so sometimes the, the hymn writers try to captivate it and say, when Christ was on the cross, I was on his mind. And he defends your past. God has made provision. He blotted out all of our transgressions. He covers all of our sins. And so we find, as Timothy tells us, but now it was man manifest by the appearing of our Saviour Jesus Christ who hath abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Isn't that a tremendous verse? Abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The offender is one who has faced our last enemy. He has faced our greatest enemy and he has triumphed. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Thanks be unto God that giveth to us the victory. He deals with our past, but he reminds us here and that he's not only the God of the past, but he's the God of the present. The Lord is. The Lord is. 
Yes, you say, I thank God for what God did for me 40 years ago. I thank God for victories that I have known in the past. But dear friend, he's the same today. He is as real. His love is as real. His mercy is as great. His, his strength is, as, is undiminished. And he is able to help you today. He is. Whenever God revealed himself to Moses. He says I am that I am. Not I was. Or not I will be. But I am. And he is all that you need. When you need him to be. All that you need. Uh, he's the great I am. Not only for the past. And the present. But for the future, uh, he has become my salvation. Uh, we can trust him whatever tomorrow holds. Uh, the God who helped us in the past, a uh, little uh, card that we did, I don't remember, years ago. Uh, yesterday he helped me. Today he did the same. How long will this continue? Forever. Praise his name. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. We recognize he has made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification. Uh, he is all that we need. We are complete in him. And we can trust him. And that's the verse that I want to leave you for this year and for this morning. The Lord. Oh, this mighty man of war. The Lord is my strength. And my song. He has become my salvation. Every need his hand supplies. All the way my Saviour leads me. What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercy? Who through life has been my guide. May God encourage you and bless you through his word uh, this morning. We're going to sing a uh, closing uh, hymn. Uh, to God be the glory. Great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. We stand the sin.
consider what you have done for us in the past, what you are to us this very moment in time. And Lord, as we step out of this service into the future, we know that thou art the one who goes before. And Lord, we pray, dear Father, that you will comfort and strengthen our hearts as we focus upon the greatness of our God. Set your seal upon your word. Encourage your people. Reveal yourself, we pray. Father, we just commit ourselves to thee. May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide upon each one this morning for Jesus' sake.